five years in FF, I still don't have an FF shirt. Hello everybody and welcome to the Filipino Free Thinkers Podcast that's also a video. I'm Red. And I'm Paula. And today we're talking about burkinis. Look it up. Uh, go to Google. Uh, burkinis. You will see the images. So, But what is it for people who it, it looks, don't if, want if to you, see it? You, you may have seen this before. It's, it's essentially a burka as a bikini. It's you know typical bikini material but it covers you from top of your head to your ankles, except there's a hole for your Wait, face. Wait, the ankles are showing or the ankles are covered? Your, That's um, it, your ankles are mostly covered. Mm. It depends on how, like if it yeah. rides up while you're swimming, you, know, yeah, you yeah. might show a little ankle. Okay. But generally it covers you and there's a little mini skirt around your hips so that the, the shapes of your legs aren't seen as much. Okay, so you aren't sexualized in the way that conservative Muslims Supposedly, do not want their woman to be. Yeah, but but you know even even the Muslims they say it's it's the most acceptable thing for a woman to wear on the beach considering normal traditional loose clothes would cling to the skin anyway if wet and the drying the weight um, issues for Okay, so it's the most conservative clothes. bikini that you can probably yeah. think of because when you think about the beach why are we talking about the beach it's a rainy season it's because <laughs> in France it's summer. It's summer. And people go to the beach. Everyone wants to go to the beach, regardless of religion. Mm -hmm. Some people are in France are Muslim. They want to go to the beach. And some of them do wear the, the, the burkinis. burkinis. Yes. And this got on the news quite recently because mm -hmm. there was this scene of oh, repression yeah. that, you know, it's very iconic. So okay. there's a woman wearing a burkini and the cop mm -hmm. approaches her and forces her to remove her burkini yes. in front of all the other people there. Mm -hmm. So it's because in some places in France, they are enforcing a burkini ban. Yes. It, it's within the umbrella of their burqa ban that, that we've seen before. We've, we've discussed talked about this before. before as well. Yeah. They, they have, as we've talked about when it comes to France, they have very strict rules on how they want France to be. When you go there, when you speak the language, you know, they're very strict on that. Okay. Before you you think secularism, it's not quite secularism. Yeah, it isn't. In France, what they what they have is something called laicism. So it's not a separation of church and state like mm -hmm. uh, what we are supposed to have here in the Philippines, most but countries. not really. Mm -hmm. uh, it, most democratic countries patterned on the U.S. you know wall of separation between church and state. In France, what they have is laicism. Instead of separation between church and state, the state actually dictates how much power religion can have in their society yes so the, of course it they have a rich history behind it i, I won't we won't be talking about that mm -hmm. it's too too long yes. for one episode but and, to summarize mm -hmm. the government does say how much power certain churches have and they are certainly limiting the power of uh, muslims or islam yes. in, in france and i find that the first thing people say when when they hear about the burqa ban when it comes to france is they they immediately ask well what about the nuns Right? They wear similar veils that, yeah. that cover the, their bodies for the most part. The nuns in France actually do follow a certain dress code. So they, there are certain things they shouldn't be wearing in public. They should, or if they want to wear them, they can stay in their private spaces. And also in France, they, the, their issue is with the Muslim burqas, it covers the face, yeah. which is a security issue. Yeah, because uh, let's say a guy who is a jihadist, could mm -hmm. be wearing it. And yeah, and you wouldn't know if they're a man or a woman. They're wearing a burqa. You don't even see their... The, it's supposed to not show your figure or your face. Just yeah. your eyes so you can move. So other than the issue, the security issue, they are, of course, seeing it as a culture issue when they, where they want uh, people who migrate to France to adjust to their culture instead mm -hmm. of um, them having to adjust to people who go into their country. Yes. So they want people to be open, to be able to communicate face to face, mm -hmm. and the, the face being covered does not fit with the culture of France. Now yes. you have to ask, why is it? Why is there a burkini ban when there when the face is not covered there? Yes, exactly. Right. So one theory is that in 2017, there's going to be an elections. Okay. And a lot of the population there are afraid of terrorists. You know that we, like most you know, of the Western and world. What do you do about the terrorists? You you negotiate with them. That's proven 
not to have worked. I mean, there's still terrorism. I'm thinking in their, you know, I'm putting mm -hmm. myself in their shoes. We want action. We want decisive action. So some politicians are being populists. You know, yes. they do drastic things like force women to remove their burqas, you know, that kind of thing, because they want to get the sympathy or the vote. Yes, of they, this they very want to scared show, population. They want Does to that show work? That Does that thing actually things. work? You know, scaring the population hmm. and then doing that, something that drastic you'll... so that, you know, do, do, do people win elections out of that? I don't I think don't know, people it, are that stupid. You know, violent campaigns against supposedly bad things without actual scientific backing for their campaign yeah. and killing people to make everyone who's scared feel safe. Uh, hmm. I don't think that works. But anyway, let me know if, uh, if you find a universe where that sort yeah, of thing works. Yeah. Let's go back to the main issue. The burkini, right? So both sides are, for, both extremes are, of course, very vocal about their own particular views, of course. So there are those who, who want symbols of Islam. You mm -hmm. know, some people are actually Islamophobic. Yeah. You know, some people actually are. I mean, uh, some people undeservedly get, get the label. But there are people who, who just hate Muslims, who, who think all of them are terrorists, who or most of them are terrorists. associated terrorism with, with Islam. Yeah, so symbols of Islam are rightly banned. And mm -hmm. these are, the, of course, the far-right people. But you people. know, no one cares about the Inquisition anymore, because you know, that's so 400 years ago. Okay. And of course, there are people on the far left who think that everything about Muslim is okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Like people who criticize the burqa as a, as a symbol of oppression are being mean to, to Muslims uh, mm -hmm. uh, without, without justification for, for being so. So I am somewhere in the middle <laughs> on yeah. this, you know. We usually are. Even in the burqa issue, like we were on this position. I mean, the two yes. of us are, yes. some, a, a lot of us we thinkers are. So what, what we think is, of course, we're on the side of freedom of speech. You know, freedom of religion. And freedom of dress. It's not yeah. really a, a right, but it should, it's essentially there. Yeah, so people have the right to wear whatever they want, mm -hmm. to express themselves whatever they want, as, un, unless they're causing some harm to others. Yeah, of course, like, you could like argue that. Yeah, a dynamite that, vest is a bad idea, generally. Yeah, that, that there would be some harm in doing mm -hmm. that, right? But in general, freedom of expression. But at the same time, I criticize the idea of the burqa itself. Yes. I mean, as a symbol of oppression. And Muslims, you know, the, the charge comes often that people who are not part of that do not understand what burqas actually mean. I mean, who am I, um, a non-Muslim, to criticize the burqa? Well, uh, just recently or in the past few months, whenever like an, a formerly ISIS-occupied place would be freed from, from ISIS, from the jihadists, one of the things that people would do would be to burn burqas, you know, as a symbol of yeah. their so their freedom. So not all Muslims think burqas deserve to be burned, but some do. Yeah. You know, there there was a we we had a discussion before about the wear a burqa to support, you know, Muslims, you mm -hmm. know, to show Muslim love. There's this call also to not, you know, to to not wear burqas in support of people who do not want to wear them. Yes. Because there are a lot of women who do not want to wear these. But are forced because their families are more traditional. Yeah, like uh, the, these conservative Muslim men. You know, yes. whenever like uh, Majina Waz has a piece, read it, it's an excellent one. He made the point that whenever M Muslim women in particular are criticized for what they wear, it's often conservative Muslim men um, hoping that or wanting women to be more modest in what they wear. Yes. It's not like uh, people from the West, you know, you know that evil West that the that, uh, conservative Muslims always, you know, rally against. Mm -hmm. It's conservative Muslim men who, who, you know, repress women by wanting them to wear certain things. Yes. So, so on that, you know, he also made a particular distinction, which I also like very much. It's that having the right to do something does not mean it's right to do the thing. Yes, that's very true. We made this point when we talked about the value of voting, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the value of voting well, yes. right? You have the right to vote, but it doesn't mean that, that you vote for anyone you like. It's necessarily a right thing, mm -hmm. right? Or we have freedom of expression, right? We can say whatever we want. But it doesn't mean that you, you say that, let's say in Uganda, you say, all gays 
and should LGBT die. community should die, that that's a right thing to do. Exactly. Right? In the same way, I, I, I'm on Majid Nawaz's side on this. It doesn't mean that women have the right to wear the burqa. I think it's ideal to do so. There is a history of repression there that not, was not always the case. Did you know that before, it wasn't so common to wear the burqa? It yeah. wasn't so enforced. It was a, it was a resurgence of the, the more conservative uh, applications of Islam. It's, it's something I find religions do go through at some point where they feel like they're letting go of the tradition so much that there are some very conservative people who try to force everyone to be more conservative because they're leading everyone else away from God. Something like that. Before the 90s, I think, I I Arab socialism was more the norm and that was when people, uh, Muslim women, could go to the beach wearing burki uh, bikinis. Yes, bikinis. normal bikinis. And then there was the theocratic you know, mm -hmm. Islamists, yeah. uh, Muslims, who really wanted to assert their difference from the West. You know, anything that's part of the West is evil, you know, the Satan. And the battleground became the body of the woman. Mm -hmm. You know, women should it be often more... Is. Yeah, even, I mean, even in the Philippines, on the issue R of our age, on the issue of abortion, divorce, divorce you know. <laughs> Yeah, women are the battleground of religion. That is not scripted. Right? And, <laughs> and yeah. yeah, because a lot of men feel like, oh, we have these ideals, we want a Mar uh, Maria Clara type of woman, so women should not have these rights in the Philippines. Yeah, modesty, the, yes. the ideal of modesty. You know, someone would probably get mad at me for, for wearing this because it shows my arm. You know, there are yeah. some people who feel certain things, but you know, it's, it's the Philippines, it's way too hot for me to really care about conservatives. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's something that people deal with a lot. But I also understand that for the burqa in particular, for the women who were raised feeling safe in it, it is something that they take comfort in. And I'm also not willing to, to take that away from them. It, it's one reason why I don't yeah. try to force people to let go of religion. If you take comfort in it, I feel like that's the value that it has for you. Yeah. And And I know what it's like to be forced to wear something you're not comfortable with, something yeah. more revealing than you would like. Yeah. And I and I don't think that anyone should have the right to force people yeah. to let go of Force is the operative word there. Consent, you know? but, guys. But convince, convince. And let's let's try mm -hmm. our part to convince other people of why yeah. of what's wrong with the burqa or the burkini. So it's it's the this idea of modesty mm -hmm. that for a woman to become modest and therefore good, there's there has to be a particular thing that she wears. Mm -hmm. And and the other side of that, and the, here's the, where it really becomes uh, problematic. When you say that one way of dressing is okay, you say that the not that is it's not, not okay. okay. So what do you call women who are not modest? You know, sluts. You know, this is the idea the of slut the slut walks, the slut yeah. shaming. And even when, uh, when the violence against women happens in, uh, and it's... You know, in, in some countries, you know, that, that, Honor killings, that time when, mm -hmm. when so many women were raped or sexually harassed, yes. you know, there was this idea, I, I think it, it's part of that rape culture, you know, where, where you demonize women who dress certain ways and think that whatever violence they, they get, they have it coming to them because, yeah. of, because they were asking for it with mm -hmm. what they wore. If they had only worn more modest clothing, if they had been wearing a burqa, let's say, then they yeah. wouldn't have been raped or sexually harassed. But we all know that, that that isn't true because you know women who wear burqa still do get raped. Yes, yes. So it's it's really this idea of, of modesty. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, the elections are coming. What what's needed in these very sensitive issues? Because um, in secularism, like here in the country and in other places with secularism, it's always a battle between freedom of religion of the individual mm -hmm. and the state not enforcing or establishing a religion so it's what an individual wants to do versus what the state um, wants the country or the, the individual to be and that's a very tricky discussion there are entire books written about this topic much debate is needed yes. but why have a debate when you can just enforce these very strict bans that are very clear that gets the job done who cares about collateral damage? Vote for the populist. You know, but luckily we do not live in a world where populists win elections. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode. 
if you want to discuss this, do attend the meetup. Details on that are on our website and social media sites. Please like, share, subscribe, donate, donate, donate. <laughs> on behalf of Garrick, Talia, Frank, Tin, Max Pepper, the analyst desk, and our millions of staff. Millions. See you next week. And if you want to attend the meetup and get a free drink from Red, from us, <laughs> from Talia too, <laughs> identify the secret Pokemon of this episode. See you next week. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. It's fine, we don't need to, it's not really about that. It's just a secret thing.